and welcome to another AVR research snapshot where we spotlight critical technology trends, industry development, and the latest research from our global team of analysts. My name is uh, Malik Sadi, Vice President of Strategic Technologies here at AVR Research. And for today's snapshot, I will be joined by my colleague Dimitris Mavrakis, who is a research, a senior research director here at AVR Research. And together, we will talk about the ramification of the recently announced partnership between DISH and uh, Amazon uh, Web Services. Uh, hi, Dimitris. Hi, Malik, and hello, everyone. Yeah, so Dimitris, you know, what is the nature of the partnership between DISH and AWS? And why do you think this is an important development in the way mobile networks are deployed? So this is a groundbreaking partnership, no doubt, right? So, uh, and, and it's very different than anything else we've seen so far in the industry. So DISH, according to their announcement, are planning to host all of their network functions, their infrastructure on the Amazon cloud, on AWS, including the radio. This means that instead of deploying the infrastructure themselves in, their, in the locations they own, they will deploy it in Amazon locations. And why, Very interesting. You know, why is this radical? Because traditionally, if you look at any carrier in the world, AT&T, Verizon, China Mobile, Vodafone, all of them, they own these locations. So they, they own the buildings, they own the infrastructure, they own the servers, they own everything. And this is, has been the deployment model for, I guess, forever, right? But now, this will not own this infrastructure. They will operate through a subscription-based model. To, and Amazon will own all the infrastructure and sell this as a subscription. And why is this important? Because a, a dish doesn't have to spend billions of capex up front to deploy their network they can engage on a subscription based model on an opex model so to speak with amazon sure. right so that removes a lot of risk and completely changes the dynamics for this right so it and this eventually may translate to completely new commercial model and much more competitive prices for these subscribers yeah, very interesting indeed, uh, Dimitris. And I understand this is the first time a cloud service provider or hyperscaler, as you would like to call them, um, uh, will be hosting a big chunk of the mobile network from the core to part of the radio. So um, you also explained, you know, the benefit, you know, Dish may have, but could you explain, you know, what benefits, you know, this partnership could bring to uh, uh, AWS and, and, and why this is uh, key for the AWS to succeed here? Well, first of all, I think that AWS has already announced that this will be their biggest client for AWS, right, for hosting. So that by itself is a big driver. They will have a huge new revenue stream for this, from, from this. That's one thing. The other thing is that now AWS, through the DISH partnership, will become an expert in telecom networks, right? So they can replicate, they can replicate the model, certainly in the US, but they can take this deployment model outside the US and they can reuse it anywhere for existing carriers as well, right? So, and at the moment, many carriers are trying to understand what their platform strategies will be. And this is very well timed. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are, you, you are aware, Malik, that many of our clients, CTOs, are looking at this with great interest, right? So Correct. such a high profile deal for AWS is as important perhaps as the Rakuten network in Japan. Yeah. And of course, all the associated you know, components like open run, uh, multi-vendor, multi-cloud and so on. So pretty big deal. Yeah, definitely, you know, so I mean, I think, you know, that new approach, you know, will uh, uh, open up a new way into providing, you know, the networks, you know, to mobile operators. And for AWS, 
specifically and their expertise, you know, and what they could bring, you know, to um, operators in terms of developer ecosystem could be highly um, um, uh, beneficial to the operator community. But how will this approach be disruptive to the traditional way cellular networks, you know, have been, you know, rolled out 5G in per, uh, per, per particular? So why, why do you think, you know, that could be highly disruptive, you know, to the way um, um, uh, wireless networks have been deployed so far? Well, there are many ways, right? So first of all, uh, AWS is built on this elastic model for compute, right? And telecom networks are also using the very same way, but traditionally carriers have been using over the over-provisioning deployment model. So they provision much more than they expect their subscribers to use. But with AWS, uh, network functions can scale out and scale in. That's, that's the deployment right. model for AWS, right? So this is radical. So if, for example, a dish network function is you know, fully loaded, then perhaps AWS will be able to use other parts of its cloud to you know, off, offload processing from that node, right? And this is something that's not uh, really you know, efficient at the moment in telecoms, especially in these monolithic deployments we've seen so far, right? So uh, payload portability doesn't happen between nodes at the moment. Of course, there are discussions for, the, for this to happen, like, you know, for example, in the cloud run model, but this is not yet diverse. This is one part. The other part is that Amazon will have consistent orchestration between their public cloud, the telco cloud, and even the radio. There, was, there will be a single orchestration platform. Another thing that's not capable, not, not possible in the telecom network, in the traditional telecom network, right? And then many others, for example, um, if we take it a step further and we look at 5G for the enterprise, then all the developer ecosystem and the B2B applications that are built on Amazon, on AWS, these may be portable to the dish uh, network as well, right? So perhaps uh, AWS will give its developers uh, access to the DISH platform and enabling for DISH a very quick 5G enterprise strategy, right? So this is an opportunity. And of course, this is the biggest, um, the biggest driver for all carriers to have a successful 5G enterprise strategy. It's right. Yeah, I don't know, very fascinating things, you know, what this type of, uh, what this new approach, you know, may allow of new use cases, new deployment model, really very, very interesting. But let's uh, switch gears, you know, for a bit to the business model side of things, you know, basically how to make money. And how, how do you think AWS, you know, will use this type of partnership to monetize, you know, their, what they do best, basically, you know, offering, you know, their services uh, over, the, uh, over the cloud, their clouds, you know, and in this case, you know, mobile operators will not be uh, 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 um, uh, any particular case, you know, for them. Um, uh, how are they going to make money out of hosting mobile network? And what value will this business model be bringing, you know, to to uh, Dish, to AWS client like Dish and other clients in the future? So I guess all hyperscalers and AWS in particular have not been sitting idle as the telecoms market has been evolving, right? So uh, AWS has been evolving and upgrading it, its platforms for carrier grade functionality, right? And if, if we look at it from a 10,000 foot view, uh, the telecoms market is just another vertical for Amazon, same as, as government, retail, healthcare, and so on. So, and they're trying to grow this vertical now by hosting network functions, right? And this could be a major revenue stream for them, this subscription-based model for hosting telco platforms. And you can see that, you know, AWS has said that this will be their biggest client for AWS. Uh, 
And if you're if they replicate this for uh, brownfield carriers, then they can grow significantly, right? So because the dish network, comparatively speaking, will be very small compared to AT&T's and Verizon networks or China Mobile, say. So if they can um, adapt this model for brownfield operators, and of course convince existing operators that they can host their network, then I think you know the profitability aspect will be major for all hyperscalers. No, fully agree. Fully agree, Sanzai. Uh, I can't wait, you know, to see you know how uh, this whole story is developing, and hopefully we'll see you know the appetite of AWS is you know is just opening right now. So I'm looking forward, you know, to see you know some dynamics in that market. A final point for me is that AWS is not alone here. Right. All hyperscalers have similar strategies, perhaps to extend their existing business model through telco, right? So AWS and Google Cloud, they have a platform as a service model and they're taking it to telcos now. Microsoft Azure has a software yeah. as a service business model. So they're taking to telcos too. So what I, you know, my opinion is that there will be fierce competition between hyperscalers in the future, right? So to host telecom networks and my opinion, again, is that there's no turning back. So once these companies become experts in managing the platforms that enable these networks, it will be a no-brainer for carriers, whether new or existing. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. And I, I could even go further. Hyperscaler is just one part of the ecosystem moving towards, you know, more open and the new approaches you know, to deploying uh, network infrastructures. You have chipset suppliers coming with different model and even operators who are willing, you know, to have their own foot uh, blueprints, you know, for uh, deploying their own network. Uh, fascinating stuff, Dimitri. Thank you very much, you know, for being with us uh, today and for all of you watching this snapshot. So um, as I said before, you know, we have covered you know, this, this area in length. And for more details on uh, the AWS DISH partnership and its impact on the way 5G networks will be rolled out, please visit abi.link forward slash IN6164. Again, thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next ABI research snapshots. Goodbye for now.